Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. A high-level EU delegation tours the OKEU hospital ahead of its opening. The government of St. Lucia's crime reduction strategy is bolstered with a cohort of special reserve constables. The RSS is recognized for its contribution to rebuilding Dominica post-Hurricane Maria. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyal. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney is this week leading a St. Lucia delegation to the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, where climate change and small island developing states will be among the key issues. Prime Minister Chastney, who is also the current CARICOM chairman, addressed the Historic Climate Action Summit, an initiative of the UN Secretary General, on Monday, September 23rd. During his statement, Prime Minister Chastney expounded on the establishment of a resilience fund as he highlighted the recent devastation in the Bahamas caused by the passage of Hurricane Dorian. The Prime Minister is expected to deliver his statement to the general debate of the United Nations General Assembly on Friday, September 27, 2019. During the Prime Minister's absence, Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation Honorable Guy Joseph serves as acting Prime Minister. And prior to Prime Minister Chastney's departure for the UN, he led a high-level delegation of European Union officials on a tour of the Owen King EU Hospital ahead of its official opening. Janelle Norville has the details. Top officials from the European Union recently paid a visit to St. Lucia, where they, among other things, toured the Owen King EU Hospital. On the agenda for the officials was to follow up on the status of the hospital and discussions on how St. Lucia and the EU can further strengthen bilateral relations. European Commission's Director General of International Cooperation and Development, Safana Manservisi, indicated that the hospital is one of the EU's biggest investments in the region and a concerted effort must be made to operationalize the hospital. My point is not to look backward. The point is to see with the Prime Minister or the authorities how this can start working and be effective in the interest of the people of St. Lucia. You know, healthcare is a big uh, challenge, you know, I discussed that with Prime Minister Gonzalez also in St. Vincent. Some regional cooperation maybe would be useful, but this is not, it's not the point. The point now is, part one of my talks here is, you know, to take stock of what is going on in the hospital and to encourage and to put also our availability, if further assist, technical assistance, capacity is necessary, in order for this hospital to become operational as quickly as possible. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney indicated that healthcare remains a top priority for the government as it seeks to ensure that quality healthcare is afforded to all St. Lucians. The Prime Minister explained that achieving this is not without its challenges. We have a lot of people right now who currently just don't access healthcare just for a lack of, of, of being able to afford it. Um, and so while we speak in terms of universal health care, we're a long ways away from actually being able to deliver on universal health care. And what has happened to St. Lucia is that um, we were not even meeting the financial requirements for health care um, when we were doing it the old way. Now that we're modernizing the plan, so you have this facility, you have other polyclinics, and also you have a hospital going in the south, the cost of those operations are now going up considerably. And so therefore, it has it's caused us to have to really put in a, a very comprehensive plan. So basically, when you were saying an evidence-based process, I can say to you that everything is part of this evidence-based uh, evidence process in terms of how we're going to be able to afford to do it. Because we're really seeing that healthcare, um, even if we're going to introduce a healthcare insurance, is going to significantly increase the amount of, of, um, of cost to the government. The EU Commission is also seeking to explore avenues of cooperation with St. Lucia in various areas, including employment and job creation. The EU officials are expected to visit other countries in the region, including Trinidad and Tobago and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The government of St. Lucia's crime reduction strategy has been bolstered with the injection of 40 new Special Reserve Constables. The government of St. Lucia has placed citizen safety high on its medium-term development agenda as it seeks to reduce serious crimes by 45% by 2022. 
Part of the approach is to focus on better policing, which will ultimately include more officers. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney on Friday, September 20, addressed the graduating class of Special Reserve officers and said that the Royal St. Lucia Police Force has responded positively to the changes. Um, that there was no security system, no way of communicating to each other. The standards at the facilities was poor. The amount of equipment that we had was inadequate. The court system almost seemed like it was against us rather than with us. And you have two choices. You can sit and complain about that or to do something about it. And my government has made every effort to increase the amount of resources that the police have. And today you are evidence of that next step. That next step in recognizing that we need to have more people, more officers in the streets. It is intended that the 40 Special Reserve officers will be assigned to key hotspot areas, including Castries, Miku, Viewfort, and Soufre. Commandant of the Police Academy, Lucenta Daisy Dolor, welcomed the graduating class. Today is an important day for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and St. Lucia by extension because you have added to the number of the police officers patrolling the streets of St. Lucia. On behalf of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, I welcome all of you to the commencement exercise of the Special Reserve Police Course No. 1 of 2019. The initial training exercise lasted for three weeks. And this is the NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. I was raped by my uncle when I was five. I was raped by my spouse. I was raped by my nanny. I was raped by a family friend. He said he wanted to correct me. I was raped by my download manager. I, 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 I am HIV positive. positive. Stand up, speak out. out. Welcome back. The Organization of American States met in Bahamas on the 18th to the 20th of September 2019 to deliberate on strengthening the creative economy and cultural sector with the aim at repositioning the culture sector to secure sustainable development. The forum discussed measuring the culture sector's contribution with use of cultural data and the cultural satellite accounts enhancing the capacity of business and enterprises in the creative economy through greater financial and technical support and safeguarding cultural heritage by developing intersectoral linkages for sustainable economic growth. The forum was timely for St. Lucia as the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries prepares to revise its national cultural policy and look into measuring the impact of tourism, culture and creative industries on the economy. St. Lucia was represented by Honorable Fortuna Belrose, Minister for Culture and Creative Industries, and Ms. Donalyn Vitti, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries. St. Lucian police officers attached to the Regional Security Service, the RSS, have been recognized for their contribution towards the rebuilding of Sister Isle Dominica following the catastrophic passage of Hurricane Maria two years on. Alicia Antoine reports. Members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force who served in the regional security system were honored for their involvement in the relief efforts towards Dominica post Hurricane Maria. The honorees served in the RSS during the operational period of September 12th to December 27, 2017. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, was on hand to present the regional security medals to their respective officers. 
Chairperson of the RSS and Minister for Home Affairs and National Security, Honorable Herman Guild Francis, expressed gratitude towards the officers for their contribution. The Dominicans were very appreciative of the, the service that St. Lucia rendered to them. I think you had an advantage on other islands in that you speak the, the Creole language. Uh, and I think that Dominicans were very, very, very pleased about this. When we were walking down to, to come to meet you, you guys, um, all we were getting was good praises from, from Dominicans. Um, and they were saying, Merci, Body, Sisset, Lisiala. Thank God the St. Lucians are here because you all were able to, to gel with the people. So I want to thank you all very much. The medals that you are going to be given today is just a small token of our appreciation. Severin Moshari, Commissioner of Police, expressed gratitude to the regional security system for the support rendered to the officers during the operational period. And it is nice to see that not only that um, our police officers up there, not only did they participate in just um, um, securing and protecting the citizens, I think there was a lot of community policing in that even during that time, we had our police officers assisting in repairing and actually doing Mr. Prime Minister doing construction work up there. And it was when the St. Lucians went up there that one of the police stations was really taken care of. So it is good to know that um, we have very good um, soldiers in St. Lucia who, when, when they're called upon, can assist not only in, um, in, in peacekeeping, but can, only, can also assist in rebuilding the community. Police Commissioner Moshari noted that six officers have also joined the RSS to provide assistance to the Bahamas. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Farmers Hutchinson is here with the NTN Rufael R. Quayle. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame Department Kinivas Cosability pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS, à ce mobile télévision national PIA NTN, à vous êtes au Nouvelle en Creole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Ministère des Affaires Touristiques, en collaboration et puis Fondation des Voyages, Officiellement établi un plan des actions qui a embrassé ressources effectivement pour réduire et croire toutes sortes de qualités de gaz qui ont été assimées en pays. En résultat des divers travaux qui ont été faits avec l'autre action qui ont été prises. Le plan des actions a placé attention principalement à ce ordi avec des grèves à paix de l'auto, les îles et l'autre façon. Le plan a une recommandation au gouvernement et l'autre agence publique pour établir divers encouragements et changement en façon de construction. Là aussi, une recommandation pour les hôtels et ces business là qui a produit ces hôtels sala et nécessité pour ça éprouver à ce manière de contrôler les degrés de paix des machines qui en service à business yo. Pour lui à sous ordi et pour établir une façon qui est sustainable en façon de acheter. Plan sala t'es développé en bas un projet de valeur pour transformation touristique qui a bas conduit le programme des affaires de l'environnement nation uni et qui a implémenté en cette ci par la Fondation des affaires touristiques. Chef pour le bureau régional pour les Nations unies, Vincent Sweeney, présenté le plan des actions là, formalement pour le ministre des affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede. Le ministre Fede a encore encore déclaré le commitment pour faire assurer que le projet de la vie est un succès. Le projet de la vie est trouvé présenté jeudi le 19 septembre l'année 2019. Le département de la pêche, en collaboration et puis organisation des affaires manger en Nations Unies, 
ça c'est FAO, tu as organisé un atelier pour tout qui est engagé dans la pêche, si même qui passe à, pour développer un web national de pêche. L'initiative, c'est pour guider le secteur en façon pour implémenter l'action pour entretenir, protéger et agrandir à ce secteur de pêche là, en la vie PEP. C'est ici. Deuxième grand chef du département de la pêche, Thomas Nelson, nous dit que l'objectif là, c'est pour réviser le plan national des affaires pêche pour aider à établir un qui est bien aisé pour comprendre. Le ça a adressé plusieurs branches en secteur pêche, par exemple, à faire les marins et les peuples qui ont tout mis vivre la mer, compressant et plein. Selon Thomas, parmi ces sujets qui étaient très haut à sous liste de discussion, c'est la pêche qui a fait sans régulation, sans un rapport fait à son activité salaire. Divers travail de pêche qui a fait sans implémenter diverses façons de protection de santé, business de santé, ça là, et manière changement de climat qui a affecté et ne suit la pêche à présent. Officier des affaires pêche et business de Vive la Main en FEO, Dr. Yvette D. Wadi, by Assurance Laki, FEO qui a continué pour chaîne comme moyen pour assister le gouvernement cette ci pour implémenter de meilleure façon. Pour chien vivre la pêche vivant en pays cette ci particulièrement en action pour développer un document de WEG qui a adressé et représenté spécifiquement le secteur de la pêche en pays. Donc, le Wadi a ajouté qui a fait la pêche et les ressources marines très important pour l'économie nationale pays, pour improuver les de production de la pêche, pour faire assurer que l'année a assez de sécurité pour nourrir et manger généralement et pour improuver la vie de pêche pour ajouter augmentation économique. Ce chef de la pêche PIA, Bay Asiwaslaki, il y a sa chaîne toute opération sustainable depuis que ça a venu en opération et il a implémenté et pour les ressources naturelles. Il y a un programme pour assister les enfants qui ont commencé à prendre, qui ont adressé diverses règles et l'autre façon pour aider à improuver les degrés que ces enfants-là peuvent apprendre à l'école première, ça c'est en grade K pour grade 3. Le ministère de l'Éducation, présentement, a sa deuxième phase du projet qui a adressé le de langage, développement professionnel pour les instituteurs et assessement des affaires de leçons pour divers sujets. L'officier qui a trouvé position comme le deuxième chef d'éducation, Dorsen Ragonanam, a déclaré que le programme a déjà fait très bien. En ce l'année qui passe, côté les plus jeunes étudiants, afin de faire l'école, j'ai improuvé autant à sa façon que au Kali. Il a ajouté que les mots j'ai augmenté par 16% et que ça mérite complémenté. Programme de développement pour aider les enfants pour apprendre les primaires, qu'à trouver administration par commission des organisations OECS et qu'à financer par agence de développement international en pays de l'Amérique, USAID. Il y a un spécialiste pour aider les enfants à prendre les primaires en agence à la liste Sagsing Terrence, de qui vision pour l'éducation qui suivre en parmi plusieurs directions en façon pour augmenter les enfants pour apprendre les et écrire primaire. Si ce pays en réussi à cela, c'est l'organisation pour ce pays Caribla qui a participé dans le programme là, et qui aussi Antigue et Babiode, Dominique, la Guinade, Sengit, Sengnevis, c'est le ci et c'est le ça, et la Guinade. Et c'est comme ça nous avons fait nouvelle, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder, pour vous faire une invitation. Pour vous remercie encore, si vous avez fait la vie, vous avez fait une autre nouvelle créole. Après ça, vous avez fait une autre nouvelle. Merci, Opil Primus. Et ici, c'est un regard à ce qui nous a fait. Partez partly cloudy à cloudy, avec des scattered moderate to heavy showers et isolated thunderstorms. Moisture and instability trading tropical storm Karen will continue to cause cloudiness, showers, and isolated thunderstorms over the Lesser Antilles. Residents and motorists in areas prone to flooding and landslides are advised to continue to be vigilant and exercise caution. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Tropical Depression 13 has become better organized than is now Tropical Storm Lorenzo. Lorenzo is expected to become a hurricane by Wednesday. 
This system is expected to remain over the open Atlantic Ocean during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 12.06 p.m. and was low again at 4.03 p.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 1.13 p.m. and was low again at 5.30 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves and swells 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to continue to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.53 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.